Today in Open Heavens through the New Testament, we're looking at Mark chapter 3. Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. And then he turned to his critics and asked, Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath? Or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? But they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Jesus went out to the lake with his disciples and a large crowd followed him. They came from all over Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, from east of the Jordan River, and even from as far north as Tyre and Sidon. The news about his miracles had spread far and wide, and vast numbers of people came to see him. Jesus instructed his disciples to have a boat ready, so the crowd would not crush him. He had healed many people that day, so all the sick people eagerly pushed forward to touch him. And whenever those possessed by evil spirits caught sight of him, the spirits would throw them to the ground in front of him, shrieking, You are the Son of God! But Jesus sternly commanded the spirits not to reveal who he was. Afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain and called out the ones he wanted to go with him, and they came. Then he appointed twelve of them and called them his apostles. They were to accompany him, and he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast out demons. These are the twelve he chose. Simon, who he named Peter. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, but Jesus nicknamed them the sons of thunder. Also Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. One time Jesus entered a house and the crowd began to gather again. Soon he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. When his family heard what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. But the teachers of religious law who had arrived from Jerusalem said, He's possessed by Satan. The prince of demons, that's where he gets his power to cast out demons. Jesus called them over and responded with an illustration. How can Satan cast out Satan? He asked. A kingdom, a kingdom divided by civil war will collapse. Similarly, a family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is divided and fights against himself, how can he stand? He would never survive. Let me illustrate this further. Who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger. Someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. I tell you the truth, all sin and blasphemy can be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is a sin with eternal consequences. He told them this because they were saying that He's possessed by an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. They stood outside and sent word for him to come out and talk with them. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus and someone said, Your mother, your brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he looked around at those around him and said, Look, These are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Wow, what a passage. Uh, A passage to me full of choices. Jesus chooses his friends, his apostles. His enemies kind of choose themselves in this period. 
He chooses a new family. And he tells us that it, it's even possible to choose to sin in such a way that is unforgivable. I'm not going to get into that theological hot potato. I'm going to talk about choices. Firstly, Jesus tells us that God chooses us as friends. Let's start there today. Let's thank God that we are not facing a chasm between God and us, but we are friends. Today, we can choose who we serve and who we bless. And this may mean we're choosing to make enemies of others. Jesus is really clear who we should choose throughout the Gospels. We should choose the poor, the hungry, the downtrodden, those who have been written off by others. So whoever considers you an enemy today is irrelevant. If you're making friends with those kind of people, then you're going to meet Jesus and you're going to do what he's asking. We can choose today what we use our hands for, the work we do and the words that we speak. All of these things can build the kingdom of God today. As for family, I don't think Jesus was disowning his biological family. He was more expanding the definition of family. That those living in kingdom community will have relationships so deep that we can refer to each other as brothers and sisters. Who can you look out for today? Who needs the encouragement of Christ that you can bring? I'm going to pray and then uh, that'll be us done. And you can get on with your day serving God in whatever you, way you're, uh, you're doing. God, we are grateful for your divine friendship. God, we're grateful for your community of brothers and sisters. Today, we choose to lose that others might gain. Please give us all that we need to serve you well today. Amen.